All right, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Osaka, Japan for the G20 summit. He held uh, several important bilateral meetings uh, with his counterparts, which uh, out of the many today was with US President Donald Trump. That was the most crucial by all respects. What's significant is the change in stance overnight of the United States. On June the 26th, while viewers would remember before Donald Trump left for Japan, he had tweeted this, and I quote now this from uh, the Twitter handle of the US President. I look forward to speaking with Prime Minister Modi about the fact that India for years, having put very high tariffs against the United States, just recently increased the tariffs even further. This is unacceptable and the tariffs must be withdrawn. Unquote. Today, however, the tune was slightly different. The US President told Prime Minister Modi that we would certainly work together on trade. He went on to say, and I quote now, we have become great friends and our countries have never been closer. Unquote. Now, G20 leaders took note of India and its importance, understandably, was reiterated by Prime Minister Modi during his bilateral meetings with respective world leaders. And this marks, many believe, a new beginning for India to assert itself in a new way, in a completely different way, on the global platform. <laughs> भारतीय जनता ने हमें मैंडेट दिया है स्टेबल गवर्नमेंट के लिए मतदान किया है और उसके तुरंत बाद आपने टेलीफोन कर करके बधाई दी इतना ही नहीं कल सेक्रेटरी पॉम्पियो खुद आपका एक बहुत ही वॉम चिट्ठी लेकर के आए यह यानी भारत के प्रति आपका जो नाता है आपका भारत के प्रति जो प्यार है उसको आपने अभिव्यक्त किया इसके लिए मैं आपका बहुत आभारी हूँ पोम्पियो भारत आए थे कई विषयों पर चर्चा हुई है मुझे अच्छा लगा मुझे आपका जो गर्मजोशी से भरा हुआ संदेश भी उन्होंने मुझे दिया समय की सीमा के में मैं जरूर चार विषयों पर चर्चा करना चाहूँगा ईरान फाइव जी हमारे द्विपक्षीय संबंध और रक्षा संबंध इन विषयों पर हम जरूर चर्चा करेंगे और भारत और अमेरिका के समान एक दूरगामी और सकारात्मक विजन के साथ आगे बढ़े इसके लिए हम कमिटेड हैं और उसके लिए हम प्रयास करते रहेंगे मैं फिर एक बार आपने समय निकाला यहाँ मिलने का अवसर मिला बहुत खुशी व्यक्त करता हूँ यू आर वॉचिंग द न्यूज आवर एक्टेन एजेंडा डिबेट नंबर टू ऑन टाइम्स नाउ Super Prime Time. All right, Shazia Almi joins us, spokesperson of the BJP, along with uh, Shiv Shankar Mukherjee. He is a former diplomat, also joining us from Delhi. Here in the studio with me is Chetan Singh, political analyst, and A. Sarvanan, spokesperson of the DMK, joins us from Chennai. Thank you all for being here on the News Hour mm -hmm. agenda. Let me start, uh, if I could, with Shiv Shankar Mukherjee. Uh, Mr. Mukherjee, there was very interesting for those of us following uh, uh, the strained uh, uh, sort of uh, relations uh, recently between the U.S. and India, especially on the trade front uh, were quite surprised to see first yesterday that tweet which was very aggressive in nature by Donald Trump uh, he, he is naturally very aggressive even with his allies or partners and we understood that but today uh, at least on trade the US reaction seemed muted yesterday he said that look I'll talk to Narendra Modi India has to back down etc etc words to that effect today he comes out and said India and the US have never been closer we're going to announce something very big on trade what happened overnight Well, I think <clears throat> two things. One, I think this is typical of Donald Trump. This is the not the first time that he has lashed out with statements that uh, we have taken, we, we have looked at as cans. I mean, in, in one speech, he talked about uh, India have, you know, having built a library in Afghanistan and that was no big deal and not really yes. any help to America and so on and so forth. Uh, this particular instance, I think, uh, typically of Donald Trump, who's made, who's right from his campaign days and his presidency has been obsessed Ivan? with trade and the trade deficit that America runs. Hmm. And he has not spared allies and friends and enemies alike. Uh, and then uh, I think Mike Pompeo came around and told him all about the talks he'd had in Delhi. 
where I'm sure Delhi had made not only its red lines clear, but also the extent to which it was uh, willing to accommodate American. It mu Delhi must have made clear that already we are leaning over backwards as far as Iranian oil is concerned. Yes. We're going to buy oil from America instead. We are already major buyers of American arms. So I think the Pompeo input into uh, the G20 summit uh, gathering, uh, the input into President Trump probably led to I, I just wanted the to get that question out of the way for my own personal curiosity, Ambassador that, Mukherjee. That uh, I, I, want to, I want to move forward now on the central theme uh, and we of course discussing how uh, the entire world uh, in this particular instance, leaders in the G20 summit and those countries are realizing that uh, India is, uh, uh, well, to use a word, resurgent uh, uh, on, on a global scale. In fact, Prime Minister Modi Shazia uh, today met many leaders including uh, Shinzo Abe, he met the South Korean President Moon Jae-in, he met Donald Trump, obviously. Uh, he he also met uh, uh, Saudi uh, Prince Salman in Osaka. He discussed trade, counter-terrorism. He had many other meetings as well. Uh, he met Angela Merkel as well to discuss ways to deepen uh, Indo-German ties. He also uh, held a trilateral meeting with uh, Xi Jinping and uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, discussed hotspot, hot-button issues as well. The RSI trilateral, uh, we believe, was a success. Uh, is this now yet another indication on how India is received on global platforms? I myself uh, was in Bishkek at the SEO summit personally and I did notice really the way uh, how India approaches things now uh, is slightly different from the way we did things in the past. India started to assert itself a little more. There are some problematic issues with people like or with countries like the US but this reassertion or this resurgence, do you think this is purely because the way uh, Prime Minister Modi approaches uh, his foreign policy or do you think this has been a work in progress for a while? Well, no, I, I think, think it has both. a lot to do uh, with, the, uh, the, with the way Prime Minister has regardless. conducted. Uh, I think that's for Shazia. Ambassador Mukherjee, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll double back to you. But Shazia, Pardon go ahead, me. please. Oh, sorry. That's, a, that's all right. That's all right. Yes. Yeah, I, I didn't understand. So, I, I think it has a lot to do with the way Prime Minister has uh, uh, conducted himself internationally and actually raised the bar and also showcased India and the India story on various international um, forum and uh, you know talked about uh, to spoken to uh, other world leaders as an equal. There has been a, a right combination of warmth, dip uh, diplomacy and assertion. Yes, there is that, uh, that uh, and it's no longer nascent this whole uh, uh, resurgence that you see and you see that uh, that the whole uh, the, that India being viewed as a as an equal as a world leader at power with others uh, that Indian passport has far more value that Indian citizens abroad uh, feel proud to have a prime minister like the one they have today and definitely in terms of uh, looking at towering world leaders and personalities Prime Minister stands very tall okay. and it is on account of his uh, excellent uh, diplomatic skills and uh, the new rules of engagement that he is so, uh, you know, so uh, tactfully okay, and fair skillfully enough. So, so, so Chetan, administered. Uh, Shazia Elmi's contention that, is that he's rewriting the rules see, of engagement, he's rewriting the terms of and engagement. And also the way, also the way you see, you Even see whether it's Mehul Choksi, where there is Nirav Modi, I mean, we hear about Swiss accounts no, okay. being frozen. Shazia, I, I got your, I got your basic point. I just want to get in uh, uh, Chetan Singh on government. this and whether or not Chetan Singh agrees that this, this uh, uh, reassertion or rewriting the terms of engagement is something you actually believe is happening. See, well, I partially agree with Shazia Z. Why? Because uh, his personality has, uh, has come taller than the image, undoubtedly, out here. But here, the utmost important to understand is that G20 summit is a very important summit. It has got a great potential. Why? Because 90% of the gro gross world products come from here. 80% mm. of the economic output come from here. And two-third of the world population is here. Undoubtedly, every nation try to make the diplomatic relation. But when it comes down to India and uh, US relationship, we have seen in last one year what has happened. Across products, like if I'm going to talk about the farming, mm. the dairy products, and also the automobile sector. Automobile sector, I'm going to talk about two-wheeler. Two you know, I mean, here, we must have seen very recently that newspapers and so many media houses have shown that how the two-wheeler's two inventory is piling up because of the import which has been affected. 
by US the uh, the no, no, tariffs Chetan, no, second, no, there, second, there have been strained relations as far absolutely. as bilateral and trade ties are concerned yeah. but, but my whole point was that uh, and, and Ambassador Mukherjee correctly pointed out uh, we should take whatever Donald Trump says really with a pinch of salt because he says one thing today four hours later he'll change his mind his own uh, uh, State Department has, has it with him really uh, I, I believe they should take away his phone clearly uh, because he keeps tweeting everything that comes to his mind but that's a separate issue but, right here but when it comes down to business he's, he's a very shrewd businessman okay. he's is absolutely clear in his negotiation approach. We have seen it time and again. He has been a very successful businessman too. But when it comes down to negotiating with some other nation, I believe like India is on a back foot right now. Okay, you believe that, in, in, especially in the case of the US, that, that's what you absolutely. believe? Because there's a lot of opportunity. Look at, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. And you're, because you're US saying and that we're not, we not able to get our point through? Is Absol that what you're saying? See, see like, okay. un until like, the transfer of technology is not going to happen, there's a lot of product. Okay, fair, fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this. I'll come back to this. Uh, Sarvanan, first of all, do you agree that uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, is now being seen and viewed across the world as a statesman? Or do you think that's more of what uh, his supporters would like us to to think no no I don't think uh, mr. Narendra Modi has established himself as a statesman for why someone to call himself a statesman why, why he should do you not say look that at the next general yeah yeah that's what he should not look at the next general elections yes yeah yeah see that's what you should not just look at the next general elections alone you should look at the next generation so now when we ask what are the schemes what are the initiatives that has taken by Mr. Narendra Modi, which is going to pass on to the next generation and show India in a bring benefit to the people of India and a good statesman brings in communal harmony and love. He does not bring in fear and hatred. And when we compare the past prime ministers, whether it be Rajiv Gandhi, Mr. Nehru, Indira Gandhi or Mr. Manmohan Singh and, and how they were received by the foreign leaders. I think there is a palpable difference in how they treat Mr. Narendra Modi. We should not forget the fact <laughs> that the US government denied a visa until he became the Prime Minister. So all these things are there. So I don't think he has... Well, I'm sure a, a lot has been said about that. A lot has been said about that. You know, you people have, people have come forth and suggested that, uh, you know, interventionists or centrist interventionists like Hillary Clinton were behind that. But I don't want to get into that debate right now. My my panel is full of uh, politicians right now, so I want to keep it slightly political as well. Uh, Shahzai, would, would you like to respond to that before I go back to Ambassador Mukherjee? Uh, Shahzai, quickly, please. Yes, I... No, I was rather amused by the analysis offered by the preceding speaker and uh, him uh, lauding Manmohan Singh as a, a far more of a statementist leader than, uh, than our own uh, our Prime Minister Modi ji, who the world has hailed, you know. Um, uh, uh, you know, if you leave a few magazines uh, aside, I mean, and we've seen what is done for the country in terms of whether it's visas on arrival or working for the OCI or the PIOs or, or, or Indians of, of, of um, you know, in different, uh, uh, the diaspora, so to speak. But more importantly, in India itself, the, the, for, to bring a, a social security net that works. So for the first time, implementation of government policies. For the first time, there is actually a leakage or a, uh, no, a prevention but, but, but Chazi, of these loopholes. Here's the question to my mind. I mean, as, 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 a, as a neutral person so on I this particular if debate, Chazia, if you allow me, like, if you allow me, here, here's is. the question that bothers me sometimes. And after you answer this question, I, I'd want uh, Ambassador Mukherjee also uh, to let me pick his brain uh, for a bit here. Uh, there is a feeling, there's a school of thought, not just in India, but also abroad, that in the last five years, the past five years, the first term of Prime Minister Modi as Prime Minister, more most of it was sent in cultivating relationships, no doubt, but it didn't really achieve that much. And if we are going to achieve much in the next five years in terms of bilateral relations, in terms of getting what India really wants, what benefits India most uh, in terms of either trade, uh, in terms of bilateral relationships or defense procurement or even any other issue for that matter, uh, there's still uh, no uh, sort of result delivery per se till now. A lot of it is just, uh, uh, is just uh, cheerleading public relations. There's a school of thought that says this, uh, Shazia. And I'll, I'll get to the nitty-gritty with the Master Mukherjee in just a bit. But do you agree with that assessment, first of all, Shazia? No, I don't. I don't agree with that school of thought at all. I think whether you look, if you look at uh, the Doklam crisis and you see uh, the standoff that we uh, had, uh, uh, you know, a few months earlier, and how that was resolved. If you look at Pakistan being called out 
and his bluff being called out as a terrorist state and um, the, all the pressure that India, India put uh, and our UN mission uh, and how well it worked in calling out Pakistan mm. as, a, as a terrorist state and, and putting pressure on Hafiz Saeed and others. And in terms of uh, this status of India vis-a-vis -vis other okay. world leaders. So you're saying we have you gotten some things India, that we uh, wanted, for, for example, Azhar Masood's uh, blacklisting. So understood, so understood. It's, it's huge. I understand. Ambassador Mukherjee, very quickly. Now, if, if taking off from what Shazia said right now, even yesterday, day before yesterday when Mr. Pompeo was here, I was in that press conference. He almost ambushed our uh, foreign minister when he spoke about Iran and called Iran the world's biggest state sponsor of terror. Clearly, my sources indicated to me uh, that India does not not share that position but again uh, when the US comes to India and Mr. Pompeo uh, being hosted by Mr. Jay Shankar can come out and uh, list Iran well, Iran has cultural and historic ties with India as well and we can count themselves uh, ourselves as friends of Iran uh, at least a while back we did uh, they can come out and call out Iran and call them the state sponsor of terror but our own foreign minister doesn't really name Pakistan just indicates that cross-border terrorism was discussed are we then getting the kind of purchase we want from our uh, uh, valuable quote unquote strategic partners like the US should have been we been pressing hard uh, harder for uh, countries like the US to do more against Pakistan rather than just uh, a a tweak here a tweak there civilian accord one second let, let ambassador Mukherjee answer my question should we be doing more do we need to get more out of our uh, valuable strategic partners like the US Uh, Arthur, in diplomacy, as in most of life, what you want and what you're going to get are two different things. Certainly, we would want America to use its entire influence to uh, quash Pakistan and its uh, you know, terrorism completely because it has the kind of influence uh, that would enable it, uh, if not to do so 100%, but to a very large extent. But that is not going to happen. Uh, you said very quickly, so let me very quickly make two or three points. Number one, it is true, uh, regardless of what you know, different people on the other sides of political divide in India say, it is true that India counts, uh, India's voice is heard with respect in international platforms. And the reason is not because of some individual dazzling diplomacy of our uh, ministry or, or a charismatic leader. They do play a part, but the reason is that India has changed. I served in Washington twice, mid-80s and mid-90s. The reason is that after liberalization, the opening up of the Indian market, the size of the Indian market and the access we provide to, to people uh, and this huge market that we represent mm. uh, is the major reason why the world takes us much more seriously now than it did before. Uh, and, and I've seen this on the ground. Number two, let us not forget that countries will pursue their national interest as we would pers uh, pursue ours. Uh, America sees India as useful in a number of ways. We see America also extremely important to our, uh, not just our bilateral relationship, but in terms of our increasing our space and our influence and our security, we can commercial, do economic, as well as uh, national security worldwide. So this is entirely a reflection of India's growing oh, since the 90s, since our liberalization, Fair enough. our growing uh, economic uh, performance. Fair so enough. let's not get carried away. I, I think I think I, I think I that, completely uh, agree with Ambassador Mukherjee's uh, you know, assessment. That other there. countries will automatically fall in line. Yes, I, I think I completely agree. I find myself agreeing with Ambassador Mukherjee's uh, assessment there. Uh, absolutely, I, I can give my reasons also, but unfortunately, I have some paucity of time here. Chetan Singh, you wanted to make a very quick point before yeah, I go back to Shahzad uh, and uh, Mr. Sadhguru. Okay. Okay. See, first and most yes. uh, important out here to interpret is the India is a very big market, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially when it comes down to, cons uh, because we've got a lot of consumers here. Uh, and no, but are you denying, as, he, as, as Mr. Mukherjee said, that uh, a charismatic leader who's very proactive, uh, 
travels a lot, talks to a lot of heads of state, heads of government. That all plays a part See, as well. Absolutely, you know, that plays a part unless you do not have an intent. But intent is plays a very vital role. As you said, politic diplo diplomacy, what you want, what you get is different. No, it is not like that. It is absolutely on intent. If you have a right intent, strong intent, you will certainly won't get it. Probably this, the but intent but is Prime a question Prime has shown intent. No, I mean, no, no, look no. at what happened in see, Bishwara. I was see, there personally. See, the and to my mind, somebody, we didn't really run that story here in India. But the real story for me in Bishkek was China, Russia and India coming closer together to see, try and give it back to the US, which I, is now I, running roughshod really over other, the world. Other, until unless on farming and on defense, until we will not be able to put our foot very strongly in terms of transfer of technology. See, what is happening over all IITs and IIMs, they are traveling out of India. They are going, they are migrating. Why? Because there are no jobs. And how these jobs are going to come when okay. there will be manufacturing unit and China, like a lot of US products are not getting manufactured in China. I, I want to quickly go across to Sarvanan before I go to Shazia and I'll give the last word really. Very quickly, Sarvanan, we have very little time. Go ahead yeah. and make your point. Yeah. 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 I yeah. see when you, when you say someone is a statesman, he will find solutions to the problems we face. The US is camping upon slapping H1B restrictions. Why the Indian government has not taken no, but it I think, forward? I think the U.S. State Department has clarified on that, sir. Even Mike Pompeo clarified on that. He came, he came with yeah. with a very yeah, velvety okay. tone, that's saying okay. that in India that's wasn't okay. uh, it okay. wasn't India centric, and they're not uh, looking at any new visa restrictions or the H-1B visa. I think that that part has been taken care of. Uh, we have no but, more time, but, but I just want to ask one last question. One last question to Ambassador Mukherjee, Mr. Mukherjee. Ambassador Mukherjee, if you could keep you keep your answer to only one line here, only one line here. My my question, of course, and my query, really, not a question, is. The fact that there has been engagement, a lot of engagement with different countries there as well. Do you think and do you believe that India perhaps needs to get closer to China and Russia in terms uh, of a relationship to get more uh, uh, out of uh, the US? Is that a good strategy? No. Uh, you said one line. I okay. said no. If you are thinking that we should get closer to Russia and China exclusively, exclusively to distance ourselves from America and to, uh, and to send a signal to America that uh, don't take us for granted, no, that is not the way to go about it. Diplomacy is far more complex. All right, fair enough. We need I got to my engage answer. with Russia. I got my answer. We need I to got engage with China. And, and, and for we those need of us who know, uh, those of us who know, um, our foreign minister clearly is a big, uh, big believer in uh, uh, better U.S.-India relationships. I know he puts a lot of uh, uh, faith in that relationship going forward. Ultimately, uh, Prime Minister Modi is still in Osaka. will be coming back tomorrow. He has more bilaterals planned tomorrow, including the one with uh, Recep uh, uh, Erdogan of Turkey and many others. We will keep a close eye on that as well. Uh, we have no more time on this debate. Thank you, Shazia Elmi, for joining us. A. Sarvanan, Chetan Singh and Ambassador Mukherjee. Uh, great to speak to you after a very long time. That's all the time we have on the News Hour agenda tonight. I've been Athar Khan. Thank you for watching.